Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel. Something really strange happened in the Vuelta al Ecuador yesterday or a couple of days ago. Now, I don't think I've ever seen this exact scenario happen before in cycling, at least in my 12 years of existence. And I'll be honest with you, I've been taking a break for the last couple of weeks or since the finish of the Vuelta a España. I've not really been following cycling because there hasn't been too much on. And the Vuelta al Ecuador, I gave a little bit of a miss. But I woke up this morning and I saw a tweet from Le Flamme Rouge saying that there was a similar thing that happened in Vuelta al Ecuador on stage five to what happened in the Giro in 2015 when Richie Port uh, got a wheel from Simon Clark. And we'll get to that at the end of this video and compare that incident to the one at Vuelta al Ecuador. And he was saying that Henry Velasco got punished or a 10 minute time penalty on stage five for receiving assistance from another rider. And well, we didn't actually know what the punishment or the report said, and we had to go digging for it. But first of all, I'd like to say, Le Flamme Rouge, it's the off season. Come on, man. Stop it. Get some help. Going through, reading jury reports of Vuelta al Ecuador. Nah, I, I appreciate the hustle. And we've tried to figure out what happened later when we're speaking on Discord. But here was the race scenario. Henry Velasco going into stage five was leading GC by a mere second over Joel Burbano. So Henry Velasco is on Eagle Bikes. Uh, but I think they're kind of got a, they share a sponsor with Movistar Ecuador team who lost a lot of GC placings as you can see after stage four and then stage five finished and the provisional results which I think are taken by hand had Henry Velasco losing like a minute and a half or so or a minute and ten seconds to Joel Burbano and I think Santiago Montenegro for Ecuador was going into the overall leader's jersey. But then a jury report came out that said that Henry Velasco and Segundo Navarrete for Eagle Bikes and Movistar team respectively were fined 50 Swiss francs each and given a 10 minute time penalty on GC for under Article 212 007-7. In the, of the UCR rules, the road rules for fraud, intent to fraud, agreement between riders of different teams, and I can't translate the rest of it. And I thought a 10 minute penalty for agreement with another rider, it must have been pretty bad. It must have been giving him another wheel or a push or helping him fix a mechanical or something, or I don't know what they would have done. It must be pretty bad to get a 10 minute time penalty on GC. So I went looking, and this was on the Vuelta al Ecuador uh, Twitter page. They put up this video. I think this is, yeah, this is from stage five. And you see here the rider in yellow, Henry Velasco leading the general classification, riding for Team Eagle or Eagle Bikes. He's getting a bike change or a wheel fixed. He's getting a push, I presume, from his team car. It was his team car just behind, I believe. That red team car is the, the right, the Eagle Bikes team car. He's got, I think, Segundo Navarrete for Movistar Team Ecuador in the blue, just waiting in front of him. So, who then, I think, gives him a draft or is ready to relay... Henry Velasco back to the lead group because it looks like there's a peloton or a second group just behind them which they slot into uh, anyway. So I, I don't really know what happened before this. Uh, you can see Movistar Team Ecuador riders at the front of this chasing group just there. But in the absence of any other information about this that I could find, it must be this incident here where Navarrete gave Henry Velasco a draft. And it's, it's clear what's happening. We can see that Navarrete's weighted. We see you know riders when they're on the same team do that sort of thing all the time. I showed that in a video yesterday with Matty Breschel's Saxa Bank teammate waiting. And you can see at the end of this clip that Velasco's made his way back into that lead group and he's sitting about sixth wheel, the rider in the yellow jersey. He's got an Eagle Bikes teammate ahead of him. I think three Movistar Team Ecuador riders who are pacing on the front. But still, if you haven't heard of the rule before, it does seem to be quite harsh. Here it is in English with the requisite penalties and it seems like the commissaries didn't really have a choice. If you agree that there's collusion between riders of different teams, then the minimum punishment there can be in a stage race, you can see here highlighted, I think Flamme Rouge highlighted it for me, is a 10 minute penalty on GC per rider involved. The only unusual thing about this is I just never remember this happening before and I think the big mistake made by Segundo Navarrete was waiting just there in front of Henry Velasco. I think if he's soft pedaling in the distance and they eventually catch up and they're relaying, I don't think there would have been a problem. I've seen that sort of thing happen multiple times with riders on different teams. Remember I mentioned on the Lantern Rouge Cycling podcast during the Giro that Ruben Guerrero was definitely riding or helping Joao Almeida in some capacity. I mean, he even tried to high-five Joao Almeida after a stage when Almeida kept pink and Almeida was kind of ignoring him. And yeah, Guerrero seemed to be part of the quick-step train on the, I think maybe the stage that Peter Sagan won. So we see riders from the same nationality or friends trying to help each other, 
before. We've seen that happen before, but never a penalty of this magnitude for doing so, and just basically for drafting a rider on a different team. But the problem was, as I said, it was pretty blatant, and the UCI commissaires or whoever it was at Vuelta Al Ecuador decided to actually punish them for it. Now, a similar scenario happened in the Giro d'Italia 2015. You'll probably remember this one quite well, when Richie Port had a puncture in the like the last five kilometers or something. He's on Team Sky and he got a spare wheel from Simon Clark, who was on Orica Green Edge. So both, obviously, Australian riders know each other quite well. The Giro d'Italia publicized it on their Twitter. This tweet is still up, by the way, saying this is cycling the best sport in the world, sort of just showing this as a great display of sportsmanship. Richie Port then uh, tweeted about it, saying thanks to Simon Clark and Matt Michael Matthews, who was on Orica Green Edge then, for helping me get going quickly. He also said, if that's not Aussie mateship, then what is? Richie Port ended up getting a two-minute penalty on GC, much to the consternation of the Australian cycling media. And a lot of people were saying, hey, you're promoting this as a great display of sportsmanship, and then you penalise him for it and really count him out of GC against, I think, Contador at the time. Really bad luck for Richie Port. So by this point of the video, some of you might be thinking, why are we penalising acts like this uh, between riders from different teams. We're ruining moments of sportsmanship. And the thing is, this isn't actually sportsmanship, so what happened with Simon Clark and Richie Port. This is because they're friends. What's good sportsmanship is when, say, Rudiger Selig looks after or goes to check on another rider on a different team who's had a bad crash in the Shell de Prey. Sportsmanship is when you do something, perhaps sometimes to your own detriment, to equalize things or make things fairer for a rival. It's not when you stop and give another wheel to you, so another rider because they're your mate. Like as Simon Clark, he wouldn't do this for anybody. He wouldn't do this if uh, Alberto Contador had had a puncture. Would Simon Clark have, have waited because it was good sportsmanship and giving him his wheel? Maybe, but I doubt it personally. He did it because he's friends with Richie Port, And that's why the rule exists. It's to prevent collusion between riders on different teams. It's to prevent underhand agreements. And that's not even the worst of it. That's just friends on other teams maybe ganging up on a rider on one team. But if this rule didn't exist and wasn't enforced, then things could get even worse with collusion, with money getting involved. If there was, if this rule didn't exist, you could basically go to another team and say, hey, your domestique, your GC leader's pretty much done. Can we use your domestique for this week? We'll pay you X amount of euro for him to ride for us this week. And that would be, if that was permitted by the rules, I mean, that would just worsen the gap between rich and poor teams. And I don't think anyone really wants to see that. That's a big extension of what would happen. And obviously I'm not saying that Velasco paid Navarrete to wait for him. I presume they're just friends, but that's the reason why this rule exists. And I'm just really surprised it's in the Vuelta al Ecuador during the off season in November that we see the first real gray area enforcement of it when it's the GC leader there just drafting a rider on a different team who's waited for him. Will this set a precedent for the UCI Commissaires and for World Tour when it recommences mainly in Europe next year? I'm not so sure. That's the reason I made this video so that when something similar happens next year in a big race, we can go back to this video and think, well, the exact same thing happened in Vuelta al Ecuador. They got a 10 minute penalty and they didn't in whatever it is, the Giro, the Tour de France, etc. But anyway, food for thought. Let me know your comments down below. Do you think it's a bit harsh? Do you think the rule needs to be changed, giving someone a 10-minute penalty for this? I think the 10 minutes should probably be changed. I mean, he can get a 10-minute advantage for Navarrete just drafting him for a little bit. A two-minute penalty or maybe even just a minute penalty probably would have sufficed. This obviously destroyed his GC aspirations completely. Velasco, follow me on Instagram, at the Lantern Rouge, if you want to check out my day-to-day -day happenings and comments on things going on in cycling. Check out the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, link in the description on major platforms. We bring out our 2020 season awards, dropping on Monday, tomorrow afternoon, uh, European Central Time, I think. That'll be a ripper. Like the video down below if you liked it, and we'll see you later. Ciao.